Hello and welcome. Today you're going to learn how to fight back when you're in a losing position and cut your losses in chess. But first, couple of things. Number one, I want to say thank you to Solvay, also known as Rookie Redhead, for featuring me on her stream and it was absolutely awesome, as you're going to see very soon. And the second thing, I've put bookmarks in the description below and you're going to find them on the slider as well. So you can just go back and forth and learn the most uh, sort of valuable lessons. Or you could just watch the stream in its entirety, you could watch it at double speed, um, as you wish. And two more quick things. Number one, you're going you're gonna to find Solvay's links down below in the description. And number two, I'm going to do a special video where I cut up the stream and show you the most instructive moments as well. So this video will be the full stream. Next one will be the cut up most instructive moments. Enjoy. Hi. Um, sorry. Um, just uh, I need to mute this on my phone. I'm really sorry. Okay, uh, we are back on Twitch after a break, and I'm super excited uh, to be uh, back into it. Hi, Rookie and uh, Kaido in the chat. I am happy to see you guys. I've been missing you. And today we have uh, something special planned. So uh, uh, we have a very special guest today. I'm going to type uh, his info in the chat. Uh, his name is Sandro, and he goes under the tag uh, Lion Chess. And I have not asked about this origin of the Lion Chess uh, tag, but I do believe it has something to do with fighting like a lion. I, I believe that is correct. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what we are doing today is, um, yeah, of course he's a chess coach, and he is going to help me a little bit because, of course, you guys know, you have seen me play. You have... Uh... Hi, Bruce Mac, Very nice to see you. So, yeah, you guys have uh, been hearing me when I've been uh, playing live that uh, my mindset when I'm playing and my self-talk is just uh, horrendous. I'm so negative about myself. Uh, my confidence is just on the floor. I even doubt myself in winning positions. So... Uh, when my position is uh, slightly worse or lost, uh, it's just uh, horrible the way I'm uh, speaking to myself. And um, yeah, my fighter spirit is just uh, not existent. So, uh, of course, uh, this is why Sandro is here today. He's going to uh, hopefully help me with this a little bit. So we're going to do this stream in two parts. The first part, uh, he's going to have a lecture for us where he... Uh, talks a little bit about the, how to uh, fight on in, in lost positions, how you should uh, think and how you should uh, play and all of this. And in the second part, uh, I am going to play against one of my stronger friends. He's around 1700, 1800 uh, rated and he always wins against me. So uh, Sandro is going to work on my self-talk and... Uh, confidence in real time as I'm playing this uh, unrated uh, game. So he's going to do a little bit of backseating, uh, which of course is fine when it's unrated and it's also uh, agreed upon with the opponent, which uh, is my friend. So uh, that's a lot of talking uh, for me. Uh, uh, I can see that uh, Harry uh, has a question for you, Sandro. He's wondering yeah. what is this position? <laughs> Uh, this is going to be the start of our lecture, where we're going to, first of all, get away from appreciating material so much. So, of course, it's a made-up position that's never happened in a real game, but this is going to be our uh, first sort of takeaway if we're ready to start. Yeah, we're ready to start. And uh, also, awesome. uh, I don't know, uh, was my introduction of you okay? Was it satisfying? Yeah, or it was more than there... good. <laughs> uh, actually, yeah. what I want to mention is that uh, you're currently in the process of building your YouTube channel and you recently reached uh, the first uh, thousand subscribers. And this yeah. is a really difficult uh, achievement, I must say. Uh, getting a thousand subscribers on YouTube in 2023 is <laughs> very difficult, especially if you are a chess uh, YouTuber. So uh, congratulations on that. And uh, I, I enjoy your channel a lot. And I think also everyone should, um, should go follow you. Uh, so you. do you want to talk a little bit about uh, your chess? Like what is your strength? Uh, uh, sure. are, you, are you playing actively or are you mostly doing coaching? Just uh, feel free to introduce yourself. 
Yeah, so uh, first of all, my name is Sandro, as was said before, and I've been an active chess player for 17 years now, and I'm 24, so I've been playing chess since ever since um, I was a kid, and I've been an active tournament player. My rating is, FIDE rating is 2200, um, online ratings are you know, 24, 2500, and I've been a chess coach for about four years now. I started in 2019, and I've been loving it ever since. There hasn't been a day that I... Uh, felt bad about it or something like I'm very passionate about helping people improve at chess and this is just just such an awesome game completely changed my life and I hope it will do similar things for you and uh, I've helped over 120 people from 26 countries um, yes I really do keep count <laughs> in my notebook and uh, I've just been really enjoying it so I'm very happy to be here today so again thank you for the opportunity and I'm hoping I can uh, teach you something about fighting on when you're uh, losing or lost, how to bring back some uh, lost positions or um, just generally keep on fighting. So, so I'm very happy a, to be here. Yeah, yeah, of course. And we are super happy to have you. So I have a question. Uh, this uh, problem that I'm bringing to the table, is this uh, something that only I struggle with or is it something that you see in more of your students, this uh, negative self-talk in worse uh, or yeah, lost uh, positions? Yeah, that's a very good question, and that's a very actually one of the most common problems that chess players face. Um, it's mostly connected to the fact that uh, chess is connected to intelligence, uh, like society connected to intelligence, so that when you blunder something, you, you instantly c connect it to like, oh, I'm so stupid, how could I have missed that, and all that negative, negative self-talk, which uh, hopefully we're going to decrease at the end of this lesson. <laughs> um, but that's a completely normal and expected thing, and all chess players face it. I haven't met a person who was like, oh, I blundered, but eh, it's okay. That's sort of more like a trained behavior as opposed to like a, like a natural one. So it's a very common issue. Yeah, I say this uh, out loud all the time when I'm playing on stream. I'm just like, oh, oh, that's a stupid move by me. Oh, no, that's stupid. Uh, why did I think that? That's stupid. It's like the only thing that I'm saying. That's stupid. Why am I so <laughs> stupid? It's the only thing I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So later on, we're going to talk about uh, what, what you can change there. Um, and what certain mentalities I personally use that have helped me grow as a chess player significantly, just from the mental side, not even the chess side, um, and what things to tell yourself after you blunder and so on. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. The chat is discussing the p position. So Jordi is saying, is yeah. it crazy that I would prefer white in this position? And, uh, and Ricky also is uh, comparing this uh, bishop to the French bishop. Yep, yep. Uh, the chat is correct. In fact, white is completely winning here, which is going to be our first lesson. Um, to, t to tell you that it's not all about material. So uh, as you've started to play chess, you've learned, oh, better, uh, more material is better. So we're just going to take everything that the opponent has and we win. Um, but ju this is just a made-up position to illustrate. Uh, so white is completely winning here, by the way, and you are completely right. Um, but just to illustrate that you shouldn't put too much value on material. Obviously, this is an extreme example, um, but we're going to start with this. Because in all of the following positions, we're going to be down like a piece or a rook, just like you would when after you blunder. So to start with a good mentality, we're going to see this position where we just win automatically. All of these pieces are completely stuck. The knight has no legal moves. The bishop can only go back and forth here. The rook can never escape. So we just win because it's essentially all of these are off the board when you look at it like that. And we just have a pawn end game up two pawns. So we're just going to push these until we promote a queen and win which is a pretty hilarious position because <laughs> you might look at this and say, oh, they're up nine points of material according to the point system. Oh, I should just resign, right? Uh, but chess is so much deeper and uh, more interesting than that, than to just look at material. So that's our sort of first bomb position. And uh, now we're going to start doing with the actual realistic stuff, let's say. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, uh, so uh, before uh, you start, I just want to yeah. give a big shout out to Marepant in the in the chat. It's very nice to see you. And also to Anita Damen, uh, which is, uh, yeah, a woman uh, here from Norway uh, that uh, that I know very well from, from the local chess community. So it's, uh, uh, <laughs> you pronounce my name so beautifully, it says, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Marepant. I don't know, I I'm trying, it's the Norwegian, I'm sorry. So, so yeah, that uh, that position we were discussing uh, earlier, of course, it was extreme, but I think uh, your point uh, came across uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so what are we looking at here? So our next position uh, simulates a real game scenario that can come, um, and we're just a rook down. 
and it seems like, oh man, how could I have blundered the rook? Um, what am I doing? Uh, I'm just gonna, you know, play the next game. Just gonna do this one quickly and just go for the next game and just trade down and whatever. I'm lost anyway. Doesn't matter. But here's the thing: the big, the biggest part of fighting on is realizing that you you're in control. Like from here, white is expected to win. I agree, but out of ten games, um, at least two black could possibly save. And that might not seem like a big number, but if you look at it over a long period of time, if you save two in every 10 lost positions over the course of a year, that will grant you like 100 points of rating. Because it's not just about winning, it's about cutting your losses as well. Winning and cutting your losses uh, mm. grants you an equal amount of rating in the long run. Mm. So many players would just give up mentally and say, oh, doesn't matter what I play, I'm a rook down. But in reality... Uh, there's a lot of fight left here. So first we're going to go through sort of the main tips that I want you to follow um, when in a losing position. So we're going to start. Um, the first one is going to be to avoid trading. Now, here's the thing. As the winning side, the idea, the simple, simple idea to win is to just trade off everything evenly. Rook for a rook, queen for a queen, bishop for a bishop. And at the end, you just a bunch of pawns. So you would just come here, pick up all the pawns and promote your own into a queen and then checkmate. That's like as easy as chess can be. So obviously we don't, we don't want white to do that. So we're trying to do the opposite of what they're trying to do. So they want to trade. We want to avoid trading. Um, so that's tip, tip number one, avoid trading. Mm, tip what number about, two. Is this, uh, yep. sorry, I just have a question. Uh, does it. this only go for officers or does it also include pawns? Or is this uh, too broad of a question to ask because it depends on the position? <laughs> because uh, the reason I'm asking is... Uh, I feel like I've heard uh, in some quote or some some uh, something that uh, went mm -hmm. down you could trade pawns but not officers and uh, but mm -hmm. I don't know is this uh, does it ring any bells or am I uh... it, does. it does yeah okay it's a it's a very good one and I'm going to explain it so I'm glad that you're um, uh, learning about all these principles but the way you improve uh, a chess like rapidly is by understanding the principles themselves so by understanding the why behind that. So when you hear somebody say online or somewhere, oh, trade pawns, but not pieces, you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, okay, you can follow it, but not know why. But here's the idea. Um, let's say we were down just a knight, for example. Nothing else. Um, if you trade all the pawns off and they just have a knight, they cannot checkmate us, right? Yeah. A single knight cannot checkmate. So that's where that uh, piece of advice comes from. So trading pawns um, allows you to, when you're just down one piece, uh, to essentially get that insufficient material draw. So it's yes. a step closer towards that. However, when we're a are, rook down, it's yeah, not because, as... Yeah, because the pawns are potential queens, yeah? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. Um, so if they were just up a bishop, uh, it would be white in black's favor to trade off all the pawns since that bishop could not do anything alone. Yeah. That's, that's sort of the idea. And uh, trading like pieces, like everything else except pawns, is... Uh, usually in favor of the side with extra material. So that's why we, we want to avoid that to keep the position complicated, uh, which is going to be our second advice. Just keep the position complicated. Because it, let's just say, to give an example with some moves, let's just say something like this happens. Now the chances of white making a blunder and uh, losing the game are very close to zero. Mm. Because we have one bishop um, and a couple pawns which most of them can't even move. So as long as they avoid light squares, there's nothing we could do. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. And this is very easy for white. Like, um, there, there doesn't need to be much skill behind white's play. They just get the rook out, take the pawn, take the other pawn, promote the A pawn, get a queen, and win. Something like that. However, in this position, if I told you, hey, black won this game, you would be a little bit surprised, but not too much. Because we still have a queen, a rook. Like, easily, we could just transfer to the king side, and just launch an attack and win. Like, it's not impossible, right? Mm, mm. But for this position, after these moves, if I told you, hey, black one, you'd be like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> How the hell? <laughs> like, well, white seriously messed up. Yeah, he must have put the king and the rook on uh, white squares and got forked or something. <laughs> yeah, even then, it's a draw of opposite color bishops. So, yeah. like, that's what I'm saying. Almost impossible to to lose for white. Okay, uh, so, so one, one question. How, uh, just, uh, how do you prefer, because we are getting questions from the chat, so how do you prefer? Do you want to just speak and then you can tell us when you're ready for questions or do you want me to interrupt you like I'm doing right now? 
and, and bring uh, questions. You can feel free to stop me at any time and just uh, uh, let me know what the questions are from the chat. So if we have any right now. Yeah, Jordi has a question. Uh, he's asking, yeah. should you avoid a rook trade here, even if it means you give up control of the C file? Like, yes, in general, don't trade when you're down material, but at what cost, he's asking. Exactly. Yeah, great question. And the answer to that is that you should give up the file. Um, so we, when we're losing, we have to make sort of adjustments to our play, which is something we're going to talk about deeper um, in a little bit. But you, when you are down a rook, you can't contest an open file. You can't um, chase down a pawn or something like that. Like these things become very irrelevant because the big picture is that we're down a rook. So it's much better to keep the pieces on and make slight concessions, like giving up a file or even a pawn, like a little bit of material, just to keep these heavy pieces on the board because these are the ones that we're going to use to create chances. So that's a great question, and we're going to talk about it in uh, other positions as well. So here, the best move for black is actually just rook f8. Just moving the rook somewhere away. Yeah. Um, saying, okay, white, you can have the file, but I'm keeping my piece. Because in the future, this one's going to create problems for you. And the game continued, queen c2. And um, advice number three that we're going to learn today is to target the enemy king. Which makes sense, because if you're down a rook, a queen, whatever, and you give checkmate, uh, it doesn't matter. Checkmate is checkmate. That's the aim of the game. Um, so that's why we go for the king and target it. So just to repeat the top three main tips, number one, avoid trading, because the less pieces there are on the board, the less we can fight back. Number two, make it complicated. So we want to maximize the room for mistake for our opponent. And number three, go for the enemy king. Doesn't matter how much material you're down if it's checkmate. So those are the top three we're going to follow. We have some other ones as well, but uh, one step at a time. So here we have to target the king. So we're looking mostly at the G file and something like bishop h5, queen e6, like migrating the pieces to the king side, basically. Mm -hmm. So bishop h5 was played. Very good move. And white, um, as white should, looks to make some trades happen. Queen c7. And of course, no way do we want to trade queens. We would much rather play like queen a7, queen a8, just passivizing the queen, just not to uh, trade. But here we have an active option, which is much better. Queen, queen e6. e6. Yeah. Exactly right. It's a part of our plan. And we're already putting some pressure on white, because if white doesn't do anything, we're going to start playing the rook Wait, to g8, yeah. queen here. Very dangerous, it looks like. So white should already take some defensive measures and play like f3 to grab control of this square, uh, to also have some rook c2 ideas of defense. So we already forced white to go on the back foot slightly. This is what we want. Now, if white sees the move f3, they're still completely winning. Everything's fine. Um, but if they don't, it's a little bit more difficult to play. So we're maximizing the room for mistake. We're making the position more complicated. And white here made a slight mistake of queen takes b7. Yeah, this pawn is irrelevant. He's a materialist. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now king h7. Very logical move, trying to get the rook to g8. Yeah. Uh, also, very importantly, not king h8 because you're still on the 8th rank. So potentially, they could go uh, rook c8 and pin your rook. Not right now because we have it covered enough times, but like in the future. Yeah, So Makes king h7, sense. a little bit more precise. And now white made the fatal mistake of queen takes b5. Again, materialistic. Yeah. eating pawns. Yep. And now it's black to move. So this is a small test. How would you continue the attack? Um... I would like, uh, I, I would like uh, several moves. I would like uh, rook g8. I would also like uh, mm -hmm. queen g4. Uh, and uh, after one of, uh, and also yeah, maybe rook g8 and then bishop uh, f3 or yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, queen g4 it blocks the bishop a bit. So maybe rook g8 first. Very good. Yeah, rook g8 is an awesome move. Uh, queen g4 also looks good. Um... Uh, many people in this position have a, um, have seen the move bishop e2, trying to say, oh, I win back material. But here's the thing. You're, we're, after that, we're still going to be down material. Yeah. We're still going to be down a piece. So that doesn't make sense. Uh, so we're going to just try play for the attack. After rook g8, white has a nice defensive opportunity, which is again f3. Mm -hmm. And they can go rook c2, rook f2. So this is a very good try. But unfortunately, uh, because of f3, um, it doesn't quite work out. Same thing for queen g4. Looks great as a move, uh, activating the queen. But after f3, um, we got to like go back somewhere. And after rook g8, they play rook c2. So they have it under control. So there's a more forcing, like aggressive move. Uh, and it's a really beautiful uh, move. 
So give it one more try. We gotta get can, all the pieces we, to get done. Can we? Uh, can we do like? Um, yeah, I was thinking it might be a blunder, but I was thinking maybe we could play. Yeah, maybe that's actually not because I was thinking Bishop F3 and he takes, and then we open the file up to the king. Mm. But the problem is the pawn ends up on F3, and we didn't want that. Okay, let's take a look. So Bishop F3, G takes F3, Rook G8 check, King H1. So in that position, can the can the Black Queen somehow get to the king side? Queen H3. Queen H3, well and done. Yeah. And then we are threatening on G2, but I, I, I'm not sure if it's fast enough or he, if he can defend. We'll see. But here's the thing. When you're losing, you can afford to take risks risk like this. Um, that's another mentality hack that we're going to talk about now. If you weren't down a rook, so let's say you had another rook here, then this would be like very risky and you're not quite sure. So if there's no concrete finish, that would be very dangerous. But right now we're down a rook. So... What's the worst that can happen? We lose? Okay, but we were going to lose anyway, right? We're down a rock. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm looking at it, um, yeah. maybe uh, we can... It's not only bishop f3, uh, also um, the move that we ended the variation with queen h3. Uh, mm. But uh, this is... Uh, because then I'm thinking you can... Uh, you, get a, you get a mate pattern if he takes because you have queen uh, yes. g8 and then he's forced to move to h1 and then you can actually mate on f3 with the bishop. Exactly. So queen h3 would work if they have to take because of rook g8, king h1, bishop f3, mate. But he doesn't well, have well to spotted. take. But they don't have to take, exactly. So they could again play this f3, which is a li liberating move from them. Yeah. And they get many defensive opportunities as before. So, maybe, so bishop f3 actually maybe, yeah, okay. does work. Um, so your intuition was correct there. And the point I was making is just that you can afford to sacrifice more based on how much material you're down. So if we're down like a pawn, we're not going to sacrifice a queen or a rook to try and maybe make something work. But if we're down a rook, I mean, that's pretty severe. Or if we're down a queen, we're going to sacrifice everything just to try and break open the king. So the more material you are down the more you can sacrifice, if that okay, makes sense. So you can't trade it, but you can sacrifice it, basically. <laughs> yeah. So bishop f3, and the variations are really cool. So let's, uh, let's see what we covered earlier. So after g takes f, rook g8 yeah. check, king h1, and queen h3. And we're threatening mate on g2. There's only one way to defend for white. What is that yeah. way? Um, rook uh, g1. Rook g1. And now we can checkmate. On f3. Yes, f3, um, they have to block, and we mate. So we were down a rook, but our attack was just awesome because all of our pieces were in the attack, and his extra rook is this one, which doesn't do anything, <laughs> which barely does anything. Like, his extra piece, look at his extra pieces. Yeah. Nothing. Like, that's the equivalent to the first position, which I, w which I made up, where all the pieces were trapped in the corner, like that. So this is very similar. So it's, it's not about material as much as it is about activity, piece activity. So yeah, yeah. pieces were awesome. So, so for me, it could be a bit uh, confusing, this don't trade your pieces, but by all means, uh, just uh, give them away. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but the thing is, uh, when you're trading them, you're not, you're not creating any opportunities for yourself. Uh, yes. you're, you're just, uh, you're just uh, trading and the position doesn't change. But uh, on, on the other hand, when you're going for the king attack and you're actually sacrificing the pieces, you are uh, opening files for other pieces yes. or you're creating checkmate opportunities for yourself. So it's not so much about don't give away the material, it's more about the way you give away the, the material exactly. you have left. Is that correct? Yes, because if you give, um, let's say you give up your bishop in order to trade something, that doesn't make sense, like on the queen side. You're not going to achieve anything. But in order to open up the king, you can freely sacrifice. Because again, if you checkmate, that's it. So may as well um, go for that. So the reason we want to avoid trading is so we have more pieces when it comes to that king side attack. So that's how we fight back. The chat has a question uh, about yes. king h1 in this uh, position. King h1? Uh, so after bishop f3, king h1? Or uh, what was the... Uh, yeah, question? because it's black to move, yeah? Yeah, so after... Yeah, Bishop this, F3, yeah, King H1 can... is a good variation, uh, trying to get Rook G1 in. Um, and now there's uh, a few ways to win. Uh, try and find the killer move for black. 
Again, mobilizing the pieces into the attack. How would you continue? Yeah, queen h3. Queen h3, yeah. Because well the done. pawn is pinned. And then you are exactly. threatening mate on uh, g2. Yeah, so if they take our bishop, it's going to be the similar mate as before. Like this. And, of course, they're not going to take our bishop. They're going to try rook g1. And now you can put even more pressure. I think rook, rook g8 just ends the game. Yeah. All of these pieces are useless. Notice that. Like, yeah. nothing they could do. <laughs> Um, uh, the pawn is pinned, so the only thing you can do is take the bishop, but now it's the same mate as before. Queen f3, rook g2, takes mate. So king h1 is a good attempt, but fails to this queen h3 again. So when your pieces are active, you're constantly going to find some opportunities. So that's another part of playing when losing, you have to play actively. I see a lot of players, uh, let's just go back to the start to demonstrate something. I see a lot of players go, oh, I don't want to trade, and then they go like rook b8, which does nothing. <laughs> uh, and then after this, they go, let, let's say this bishop h5 again. And after this, they go, oh, I don't want to trade queen a7. Like, yeah. they just kill their pieces completely. <laughs> yeah. that, that's not fighting back. That's just, you know, torturing yourself for no reason. Yeah. So when you fight back, you got to go active, aggressive, fight back. Yeah. I, I, very, I can, I can um, see myself in this uh, stupid moves you illustrated right <laughs> now, just hiding in the corner. Uh, yeah riddled with shame and it's just like you come and get me i deserve it <laughs> yeah that's a mentality thing more than anything because um i always say to my students like i love to be losing at chess like when i blunder a piece or when i um blunder a rook queen whatever when i blunder significant material i love that and they're like what the hell <laughs> and i tell them that allows me to go berserk to go crazy like i can just push all these pawns in front of my king do everything that i'm not supposed to do usually um because why not? That's my chance to get back in the game. If I was not down a rook, if I had another rook here, then it would be a shame to like open up my king and risk all of this stuff or give away the open file. All of those small things would be a shame. But now I'm a rook down. Let's go. <laughs> Worst yeah. case scenario, I lose. Okay, that, that was the current case scenario. <laughs> yeah, and actually I had an online game a couple of uh, days ago where I was up, I think, uh, seven material mm -hmm. or something, and I lost okay. because my opponent did exactly this thing. It just uh, threw everything at me and also yeah. in a very, very uh, elegant manner. So I wasn't mm -hmm. even angry with myself when I lost. <laughs> I just thought, okay, that's, uh, that's really nice. He deserved that. <laughs> that yeah. was uh, inspiring, you know? So, yeah, I, I feel like I'm getting some inspiration here. Very good. I'm happy. Let's take a look at our uh, next position, which talks about the question we had a bit earlier about making adjustments. Um, so in this position, we're not down any material. Um, we're just doing well, and we have a little bit of a weak pawn here. So usually, if this, if this is the position, we want to get rid of our weak pawns. Whenever you have like an isolated pawn or a backwards pawn or something like that, a weakness, you want to get rid of it and trade it for like a healthy pawn. So here the best move is d5. Then after a capture, we have to recapture. Let's say a lot of trades happen. We're going to get to the point soon. And this would be a completely fine position. But now let's go back to the start. And let's say we didn't have this bishop. The game completely changes. Now d5 would be a horrible move because it would allow white to trade two pairs of pieces, as we just saw. So imagine this whole thing, but you don't have the f8 bishop. You just allowed white to trade off nearly everything and have a much easier game. Yeah. So our strategy would completely change. We wouldn't be able to do the strategic thing that we would usually do. So this applies to taking the open file, as we saw in the previous example, but also getting rid of your weak pawns, uh, taking the opponent's pawn, something like that. So when you're down a piece, a rook, a queen, something significant, you have to completely adjust your play and sort of throw the strategic stuff out the window. Which is a little bit harsh, but <laughs> you're gonna have to trust me on that one, um, yeah, yeah. because it just leaves keep, leaves pieces on. So if we didn't have this bishop, probably the best thing to do, practically speaking, um, would be to play, let's say, queen b7. Why queen b7? Because it puts pressure on the opponent's king, mm. and also stops rook e1, which would force a trade of our rook. So that's an example of a move I would kind of search for, something yeah. that keeps pieces on the board, avoids trading, and something like that. So the only, time, the only time I trade when I'm losing is, because, is if I trade off like a defender of the king, mm -mm. Where, when I have to get to the king. Uh, but these are the tips you have to follow to uh, fight back successfully. So that's making adjustments. So positional play goes out the window when you're down a piece or a rook. 
which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> still is. Awesome. Now, our next one. So you go into barbarian mo mode, basically. Yeah, and it's so fun to play, I swear. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I love it. Like, where else are you going to be able to go just, like, crazy with the pawns and um, just go crazy with the attack? You can sacrifice anything you want. Like, well, well, where else do you get that freedom in chess? Well, this is my regular play style, uh, except when I'm losing, because then I just retreat into my shell. So it just seems like <laughs> I've been doing it all wrong. <laughs> it's like opposite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. It's okay, we're, we're learning. Uh, yeah, one bit at a time. So here, next position, we're down a rook. And instead of saying, oh, how could I have lost a rook? I'm so stupid. That doesn't help you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> to make the best of it. You got to make the best of every single position. So you, you, you should just imagine, like when you blunder, you should imagine that that didn't happen. You just teleported into this position. Somebody gave you this position as a puzzle, you're a coach, and you have to make the best of it. Yeah. And that's how you sort of um, split up emotions from a chess game. You say, okay, it happened, it's going to happen again, not the first nor the last time, whatever, let's just make the best of it. Yeah. And especially if you have my mentality of, oh, I could just go <laughs> berserk, you know, um, yeah. it's super fun. And also so, that the uh, open G file in front of the king should be a little bit of a hint, yeah. A little bit, yeah, well noticed. Mm -hmm. um, so we already have um, something to work with. So this, this chapter is about activating your pieces uh, towards the king side and migrating them there. I think so, the knight uh, would be nice on F5. Well done, yeah. Uh, so we're looking to reroute our knight because it's not doing much. Um, and you can notice immediately E3 and then we have some nice squares. Yeah. And I'm going to mention again, if we had like an equal position, if we're not down the rook, and this pawn is here, let's say, probably d5 would be a better square than f5. Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, but now f5 is closer to the king. Exactly right. And now yeah. we can do things on uh, e7, we can do things on h6. Yeah, a lot of good squares there. So yeah. knight e3 was the first move. And black is up material, so they should trade, and they offer to trade with queen c5, makes sense. We don't want uh, to trade. Maybe we could uh, bring back to e2, and then we can use the diagonal up mm -hmm. to h5. Nice, exactly. So queen e2, queen h5. In the game, a slightly trickier move order was played. Knight f5 first. When you're losing, you got to be tricky as well. So here, ah, black, uh, white yeah, is basically because, saying, oh, yeah. after this, intermediate move. Yes, this is a nice one. Here, here, they go king anywhere. And now we actually have like compensation. Like yeah. we're we're down only in exchange, and we have some beautiful squares. So this I think is an equal position, or white is better. I don't think yeah. black could ever be better. Here. Um, so after knight to f5, black did not go for that, of course. Black went bishop d8, and now we go queen e2, your initial idea, and black did king h8 to regain some control of the g file. Queen h5, and queen h5, we need, and we also we can lift the rook to a3, and we can bring it to the h file. Nice job, yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So you're you're getting the hang of this. So instead of going um, uh, queen h5 first, white just chose rook a3. It's just a move or thing. Um, I, I'm sure queen h5 is also good. Um, but after rook a3, so we got to get all the pieces to the game. Mm -hmm. Knight c7, rook h3. And the idea of knight c7 is to go knight e6, as happened in the game, because after queen h5, they have knight to g5. Just in time defending this one. Yeah, ruining the party. Unfortunately. <laughs> However, um, so after this we don't have anything, unfortunately. We can't kick away the knight or something because of the pin. Um, our pieces aren't fast enough, so this wouldn't quite work out. After queen h6, there's just like rook g8 defending the checkmate. So mm -hmm. white just said, okay, instead of queen h5, I can just get a draw. Do you see the perpetual check? Hmm. Yeah, I think uh, maybe if... Uh, I'm just thinking about if we sack the rook. Okay, let's take a look. Rook um, h7, king h7. And then, yeah, maybe actually he can... Yeah, because rook takes, king takes, queen h5, mm -hmm. king g8. Uh, yeah, because I think the problem is uh, we can't keep checking because he can block with the knight, so maybe it's not the uh, rook takes. Um, mm, Do we have any other forcing moves? Let's see. 
I can't see any other checks. Is there any other checks or am I blind? There isn't any other checks. Uh, so it's sort of, everything points to rook h7. Hmm, that's a bit strange. But after king h7, queen h5, mm. king to g8. Um, queen g4 is the first move I saw as well when I looked at this position, but you're right, okay. they would just block with a knight. Yeah. So it's another move from there. After oh, we can, oh, with the uh, with, uh, knight. Knight, yes. Yeah, knight, uh, knight h6. h6. And after king g7? Um, we can do... Oh, my visualization is, uh, let's see, uh, blurry. Okay, rook you can go from the start. Takes, rook takes, king takes, queen check, king g8, knight check, and then king goes to g7, you said? Yes. Uh, we can... Oh, this is a bit hard. Um, that your knight is here? Their yeah, queen is here. Yeah. Uh, we, uh, <laughs> queen g4 doesn't work, yeah? <laughs> Correct. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, chat. Uh, I'm struggling with my visualization. Uh, That's okay. Oh, knight back. So, knight back. Good job. Yes, That's the knight one. back. It was easier when you highlighted the squares because I could see it yeah. was uh, highlighted in a knight formation. That was still very impressive. That was a lot of moves you visualized. So that oh. was good. Let's see. Rook h7. King h7. Queen h5. King g8 the only move. And now the knight has to give perpetual. And wherever the king goes, we could do knight f5 check. Whether that's a discovered check or a normal check, doesn't matter. So we repeat perpetual like this with the knight. And we save the game. Down a rook. So I think uh, in this position it would be... Uh... Difficult for me to switch from full-blown uh, king attack <laughs> to saving a draw. Like, uh, it is, this would it be is. difficult for me. So I think the mistake I probably would do in that position would be to be so in love with the thought of uh, checkmating the king that I mm -hmm. wouldn't uh, accept the uh, defeat and just continue to throw my pieces and lose, probably. <laughs> That's a very uh, common thing. But if you think about it, if, you're, if your biggest problem is settling for a draw, a rook down, <laughs> that's not much of a problem. <laughs> no, okay. We're, 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 we're very happy about that problem. Um, so yeah, and that's, that's the game. And also so, maybe it's uh, experience. And, uh, and to be fair, I haven't really studied per 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 <laughs> perpetual, perpetual checks yeah. <laughs> a lot. Uh, yeah. so, so maybe... Yeah, if I did some uh, course chapter on perpetual checks uh, before, I would find it. So uh, maybe experience maybe, and just yeah. studying. But uh, still, Could very be. very interesting, this uh, position. Yeah, and I just want to say I would also be in love with Queen H5 here and trying to checkmate, and it would be a shame to only get a draw. So that's completely fine. <laughs> I yeah. would also feel bad about this. But again, if that's our biggest problem, we have no problem. Great true, job. True. So you activated your pieces in a wonderful way and transferred a rook down into... Does white win or <laughs> does white have to settle for a draw? Oh, by the way, it... the chat is uh, the chat is catching uh, my negative mindset already. Uh, yeah. Because I was apologizing for being too slow in uh, visualizing, and, oh, and the chat okay. is reacting. Uh, Rick is saying she apologizes quite often for no reason. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's just uh, negative self-talk all over, yeah, even we're gonna in work lessons. On that. We're going to work on that. Don't worry about it. But it's hard to break a bad habit. Right now, it turned to like a habit. It's something normal for you. Uh, and it's really hard to break. So you should know that it doesn't happen overnight. I can't just say one magical sentence and then it's like, oh, yeah, everything's fine. Oh, okay. So I'm it's something I'm gonna, that takes time. I'm going to kick you off the stream now because I was expecting you could just uh, snap your fingers and solve everything <laughs> for me. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. Okay. Awesome. Uh, next let's, one. Yeah, let's move on. Next lesson is to be a practical player. And what that means is to get away from like engines and stuff like that when it comes to stuff like this, because the engine will not tell you anything about how to play losing positions. The engine knows what's ob objectively the best, but that doesn't mean that it's the best in human play. Humans are very different, of course. So to, to make practical decisions means to make it as difficult as possible for a human opponent. So I'm going to show you what that means through a couple of examples. It may I'm, be a only, little bit I'm only hyper-focusing on that fork on T7. <laughs> it's like the only thing <laughs> yep, I'm seeing. It's staring, staring us in the eye. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if we go for that, 
and take and take, we're still down a piece. Yes, it's so hard so to not go for that. Uh, it's first. very hard to not be like focused on material, I know. Um, but if you were only down an exchange, of course, we would just win it back and play an even position. But we're down too much material, so that's not quite enough. We can't, uh, we can't really cash out in material right now. Oh. So we got to play for the attack. Yeah. And here, the most, the best practical try is actually to move c4, which is absolutely incredible. But we're going to see why, why and how it works. The point is to open up this diagonal to create chances. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it works. So after c4, they could take in two different ways, but none of them are too good for them. After d takes, we could remove the defender here and take the c6 pawn. So knight takes b7. That's beautiful. King has to take and queen c6 and we're in. <laughs> the, if this is not chances, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, so we, we maybe checkmate here. We maybe get a killer pass pawn. I think white is playing for the win now. Their extra rook is this one. That's doing nothing. So yeah. So that's why d takes c is no good. And after b takes c, there's the other practical sacrifice, b5. Again, we're a rook down. We don't care about a few pawns. Who cares? b5. Yeah, because if he takes with the a pawn, our a pawn could become quite a thorn mm -hmm. in his uh, side. Yeah. Exactly. a6, uh, they got to move back. a7, um, we have knight a6. We have the open a file, a file yeah. over here. So maybe the queen goes back like that. Um, and does some work there, but this is a lot of practical chances and just an amazing try. Mm -hmm. um, for, for example, to give a quick variation, let's say bishop c8, um, a7, uh, let's say king eight, king 8 only move, and try to find the best move for white as a small puzzle. Um, first move I was thinking about was... Uh, knight. Uh, I don't know if this works. It it seems a bit uh, weird to me. But the the first thing that was catching my eye was uh, knight a six because if he takes, mm -hmm. then we can attack the c six pawn, and yeah. um, and uh, the bishop is hanging, and also we have pressure on d five with the powerful battery. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, doesn't. It seems like yeah, it could be something better. Um, Ninety six is a good try, but you're trading pieces, so you have to be very careful. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's maybe, good, maybe, but there's a better oh. way. Uh, I was thinking, no, I was even considering rook a six, but I don't know. That's uh, that's uh, worse, I think. Mm. So. Uh, but uh, you just need to look at it, you know. Um, yeah, it's in, it's very interesting. Rook a6, takes, takes. The bishop is hanging. Maybe they could, like, defend it. Hmm. I need... Uh, it's uh, it's bothering me, this uh, locked diagonal. I want to do something about it. But uh, it's uh, difficult mm. to me to see how. Uh, because e4 doesn't seem to work. Because uh, yeah. then we just uh, attack our own queen and lose tempo. So... Mm -hmm. uh, maybe what we could do is, um, no, I can't find a way to do that either. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it seems like it's the best, uh, best move I can find is the knight a6, but I can see it's suboptimal. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm going to try to help you with two words. Okay. Go berserk. <laughs> go berserk. I'm, I'm trying. I'm or trying. go crazy. Okay. You, you're, uh, you're trying. Queen, um, queen takes good d5. Move. Queen takes d5, okay. <laughs> but there's no way that works, right? They could just take back and... I'm waiting for the... Oh, wait. <laughs> I think it works, actually. It does work. Great it's, job. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, horrendous, <laughs> but it does work. Because uh, if you sack the queen there on d5 and he takes... Uh, oh. And you take back with the bishop, there's no way to stop that mate. Uh, he can job. try. He can try to block it with uh, the bishop, but then you deliver mate on b7. Great job! So as soon as I said go berserk, you found it like two seconds, right? <laughs> yeah. So that that's the mindset you want to have throughout this. Like as soon as you um, are a rook down, you have to look at like everything, like the craziest things. Um, and queen takes d5 just wins uh, because okay, if they take, they can checkmate it. If they don't, we're just going to do the same thing again. Yeah. Even if they defend it, like doesn't matter. We're just going to go through it. 
So they can't possibly, like, let's say Bishop B7, just go again. <laughs> so it's we have, fun. Uh, we fun. have a visitor now, uh, chess coach uh, Andras is here. Oh, in the welcome. Chat. welcome. So I'm going to give you a shout out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, my moderator already did it. But uh, it's very nice to have you here, uh, Andras. Uh, welcome. We're, we're welcome, trying Andres. to work on my uh, negative self talk today and uh, learning to go berserk in. Uh, yes. To save well, lost positions. Yes. Okay, so this one was uh, quite spicy, and it seems like mm -hmm. uh, the chat agrees. And, uh, and also, it all starts uh, with this. Yeah, uh, the chat pointed out your smirk when you said, uh, no way, that works, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to keep a poker face, but it's, <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> awesome. So make practical decisions. We're rook down, but we got to go for the king, blast it open, uh, allow our opponent to mess up. Amazing. Yeah, so, so the so the thing that uh, that should uh, I should focus on in this position is, uh, of course, uh, notice the nice battery, and mm -hmm. we just need to find a way to break open those pawns on that diagonal. And if we sack one or two or three pawns, doesn't matter. Yes. Uh, because we are losing if we are not uh, checkmating, basically, because we are down. Exactly, because we're down a lot of material. Yeah. Um, so it depends on how much you're down. But I just want to point out, uh, especially in this position, you were like, oh, I wish I could open up that battery. And you stop there. So whenever yeah. you, you say to yourself, your intuition is amazing. Like, you should just follow your gut. Uh, but try to make it work, like with actual moves. So queen takes d5 would be a way to just break it open. Yeah. So wonderful. Great job. That was awesome. Yeah. Now, our next one is going to be about creating traps. Uh, it's actually black to play here. Uh, this is also a really interesting topic. Uh, to create a trap is basically to make your opponent's most logical move a mistake or a blunder. So here, um, it's black to play at the moment, and we're down a piece. And we're being threatened with a fork, that is correct. And black played a really interesting move here, rook g3. And white just basically said, okay, but you're still forked, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, knight f5, and white played it. Little did they know that was a trap. And now it's black to move and checkmate. Hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to... Okay, I'm... I'm... It's a bit tricky. Take your time. It needs to be a pawn move. Uh, I think I got it. Um... I just need to check the other one first, if there's any. Yeah, I think uh, a5 uh, and passant, uh, c5, uh, king, b5, and no, it's I don't think it, because I thought uh, rook b3, but actually he can um, escape Where? to a6, so that's not it. a6 is occupied by something. Go through it one more time. Oh, this visualization. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A5. Yeah, he's on pawn and passant, of course. Yes. Good job. Exactly. Uh, so now let's take a look. A5. B takes A6 on passant. C5 check. King B5 only move. And rook B3 mate. An absolutely beautiful <laughs> trap. So let's see that from the start. Uh, black was very sneaky and made white's most logical move a blunder. And white yeah. fell into it. So we're not saying that this works every time, but of course, if you can make this situation happen, this is like gold, absolute gold. Yeah. Because um, a lot of the time, they will just go for it. Yeah. So so the thing is, uh, in the position with the rook on g7, you mm. need to recognize that there's a mate here, but I need a rook on the third rank. Mm -hmm. And in order to not make it obvious, I'm going to lure him with a fork. Exactly. Because he's yeah. up material and he's probably a bit cocky anyway, so he might as well go for it. Yeah, all of this comes from your opponent essentially not being careful, because there's a chance that, of course, they see that and they just play rookie one and we're still, uh, let's say this rook, rookie one and we're still, you know, down, <laughs> just losing. Um, but, of course, we're maximizing the room for our opponent to make a mistake. They're not going to make a mistake unless we do something like this, aggressive, active. If we play king c8, like, such a passive move, there's no way they make a mistake. Any one of their logical moves is very good, you know? But, uh, so but uh, after rook g3, white can uh, avoid it by not uh, moving that knight, yeah? Because then mm -hmm. uh, the b3 square is uh, blocked. 
Yeah. Yeah. So so the it depends on him making that error basically. Exactly. But we're allowing him to make a mistake essentially. Um so the move here for white I think is just rook d1 uh making our king run away because this wouldn't be checkmate if our king didn't cover the c6 square. So at the end yeah. of that variation let's just see it one more time. Um our king is covering c6 that's why this is checkmate. If they had uh, played rook d1 before and we played king c8, they could just, against rook b3, run away. You know? So objectively speaking, um, white is completely winning, but we're allowing them to make that mistake. That's what's important. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. I well understand. done. Uh, Sir, Sir Rally under developed uh, says that uh, you sound like uh, Swiddler. <laughs> Swiddler. <Your> <laughs> That's a first. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. I think it should be a compliment. He has a very nice podcast voice. Oh, nice. I'll check it out. Also, I know you can't see the chat, but uh, it seems like yeah. Yeah, the chat is enjoying the lesson so far. And oh, thank you very I much. Cer I certainly am. I'm feeling I'm getting a bit inspired. The only thing I'm thinking about for the second part where, where I will pay, uh, not pay my friend, but <laughs> play, <laughs> <Player>. play <laughs> my friend, my stronger friend, is that uh, I feel like the issue often is... Uh, I uh, he is going for he is going for the oh thank you so much for subscribing uh, I really appreciate this so much thank you thank you I really appreciate that yeah I feel like the problem when I play him is that uh, I don't uh, <laughs> I am the one under pressure all the time so I, so I feel mm -hmm. like it's uh, it's it's difficult to just throw my pieces when I'm down material because I feel like my opponent is throwing the pieces on me so yeah but uh, but uh, yeah, maybe it's uh, it's a bit the uh, mindset too because uh, when you are negative and all of this, you will just maybe retreat uh, mm -hmm. and, and not uh, think about uh, forward moves and retreat in your shell and try to hide and and this uh, just uh, ultimately makes your position even worse. So yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting to to see later on. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this was a nice example. Yep. And now I have to teach you about something <laughs> which I'm not uh, proud to teach you, but it's my duty. Uh, I call it the dirty trick. Okay. And this is like your last resort um, for how to save a game. Because in this position, what's happening? Our king is about to get checkmated. Like to a lot of moves and there's no real way we can save it. Even if we try something like queen a1 holding the back rank, there's going to play like queen d5. This is just game over. No way to stop it. At the very least, we, we lose a queen with like king f1 here and we lose. So obviously we're dead lost. So when you're dead lost, the last absolutely dirty trick you have to try is to make a horrible blunder, technically, along the lines of this, queen h6. <laughs> the reason that's a dirty trick is because there's a chance your opponent doesn't see um, this over here, the fact that their queen is hanging. So they just play like king a5 or another logical looking move so that you run out of checks and you take their queen and you're winning. So a trick like this is your absolute last resort. Uh, the reason I have to teach you this is because people are going to do this against you. Sometimes you're going to be playing black. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm just relaxed. You know, I'm just winning. Let's move on to the next game. I'm just going to checkmate this guy quickly. Um, oh, yeah, I'm just going to run. Now he has no more checks. And then they take your queen. And you're like, oh, no, <laughs> not like this. <laughs> Yeah. So this is an absolute last resort. It's considered maybe a little bit disrespectful. Um, but hey, you know, we're learning how to save games. This is a possible yeah. way. Yeah. So and, something uh, to... Uh, especially... Remember? Yeah. Uh, perpetual checkmate is saying you will need to shower, shower after that because you'll feel uh, too dirty. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But uh, uh, maybe especially relevant in uh, bullet and uh, blitz like in speed chess. Of course. Of course. Or it could be like rapid but time trouble generally. Yeah. Um, so time trouble loves these uh, dirty tricks. But the thing is that if you take time to think about your move and then play this, um, then it's going to be a lot easier to read. So you have to play like it immediately. As soon as your opponent plays their move, you play this. Yeah. That way, there's the shock effect as well. That's that's something I've um, seen a lot of times in my you know uh, four thousand games of Bullet. Um, you have to play it immediately because if you think a lot, and then they're going to expect something like this. So you have to be ready to do this ahead of time, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. To increase the effect. But, okay, so uh, the awesome. last resort is the dirty trick. Yes, that's the one. Um, that's actually the second last resort, because I have something else spe special for you, which...
which is the absolute last trick. And uh, here's how it goes. Let me just get the position here. So story time. I was playing um, some sort of blitz game with uh, a creation friend of mine. And uh, it was like a blitz tournament anyway. And we had this position. I'm just down a rook and pawn and they just promote. They're about to promote um, this one. And the last trick I use isn't that dirty trick. The absolute last one is stalemating yourself. Have you ever heard of something like that? Yeah. Like intentionally stalemating yourself. And there's a bit of a, a thought process it's that goes into this. It's better than losing. Yeah, exactly. It's the absolute last thing. Uh, and here's how it works. So let's just see how the game continued for a little bit. Uh, so here I opted to take my opponent's pawn instead of the rook because it's easier to play with a queen than a rook. And basically, you have to, in advance, think about where is the possible stalemate. So obviously it's not going to be in the open board, so it has to be somewhere on the edge of the board and usually surrounded by some pieces to make it less obvious. So here what happened. Um, I saw that my opponent's next moves are probably rook h5, rook g5, and take out the weak pawn. That's the only way to sort of crush this, otherwise I'm just going to play king left and right. So there's going to double up on my weak pawn, take it, and, you know, then it's easy. So I was like, hmm, is there a possible stalemate there? And in fact, there is. So I played, after rook h5, I played a3, and after rook g to g5, I played king a4. <laughs> Yeah. In the game, he fell for it and just took here because he was in time trouble, of course. Yes. And that's a stalemate. So a bit of a technique that goes into it. So you have to get rid of all your other pawns, of course, and everything. But you have to predict your opponent's way of, uh, of how they're going to continue. Predict your opponent's most logical moves. And then and try to make a stalemate around that. So you pretend that they are forced to play this, no matter what happens. You just pretend. Obviously, they don't have to, but you pretend and you set up a stalemate. So that's how I saved the game against my uh, good friend, which was awesome. awesome. So that's the absolute last trick I use. And I have a okay. few examples of that. Um, so let's see this one. I have the entire game, but we're just going to look at the end. I was playing black. Uh, the reason I'm playing on is because we're both at like five seconds here. And here's the deal. Many players um, expect your move in advance. So they know what you're planning to play. So here my opponent was thinking after h7, that I'm going to come here and, of course, take the pawn. That's the expected thing, right? Mm. That's the most logical thing to do. So a part of playing for stalemate is actually breaking your opponent's ex expectations. So doing something that is not expected, so they get a little bit shocked um, and have to spend a little bit more time. So here I played king g6. I'm allowing promotion, but with a queen, my chances of stale getting stalemated are increased. Notice he doesn't promote at all. Because we're both mm. at like two seconds here. <laughs> mm. We have seven. But this is the highlight. After rook e7, what does, what does white expect me to do? Take the rook. Yeah. And then they're going to promote safely. And their queen is not going to be close to my king. So it's not stalemate. Right? Yeah. So you're going to um, g6 and he's uh, pre-moved the promotion. Yeah. Good job. Exactly right. So I know that he probably pre-moved promotion here. Um, so I went king g6 and my assumption was correct and it's a stalemate. <laughs> that's awesome. So it's like psychology as well. It's super cool. Uh, but that's the absolute last trick I use. And one more final example um, is going to be my what I call my immor immortal stalemate. Uh, <laughs> so again, I was playing black here. I'm curious. It's one of my now. favorite positions ever. Uh, obviously, I'm just lost, as lost as I can be. I'm about to get checkmated over here. They played rook g7, trying to trade, of course. Um, and I play b4. Um, if I have a pawn here, I can't get stalemated. Very simple. So I'm trying to get it to b3, where it's going to run out of moves. b4, they go rook takes f7. What are they expecting me to do? After rook takes f7. Um, take back? Mm -hmm. Whenever something is captured, the expectation is to be <laughs> recaptured. But if I do that, I just get checkmated. Yeah. Um, so I have to break their expectations. And I did just rook g8. Uh, they did rook g7, trying to trade, and I did rook e8. Why rook e8? Because I baited them into playing f7. That's and a very then, logical looking move. Yeah. And now what? How did I save a draw here? Um, mm -mm, mm. 
chat is saying resign. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't hear that. The chat is saying resign. resign. <laughs> this is not the solution. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, not. yeah. So, so the thing uh, that uh, I I want to do is uh, at least get the pawn to b three. Uh, and mm -hmm. but uh, the problem is um, uh, after pawn takes uh, rook, it's uh, checkmate. Um, mm -hmm. And also the problem is if you move the rook out of the way first, for example, to give a check to the king, and then mm -hmm. move the pawn, it's uh, still uh, checkmate on when he promotes on f8. Yes, that um, is true. So, uh, it seems like uh, it's, a, it's a bit... Um, difficult for me to solve this one it's a bit difficult because um you said after rookie one check and b3 um as soon as he promotes it's checkmate yeah but it's our move that's very very important so it is to go rookie one because that's the only way to stalemate your pawn basically to make the pawn run out of moves because if we play b3 and it's their move they're going to use the discover check to give a checkmate they're going to promote they have so many things to do mm. Mm. Probably the discovery is just game over. Um, so we have to do everything with check. Rookie one doesn't matter where they go because b three is a check. They went king a two in the game. Oh yeah, I missed that uh, b three was a check actually. Yes, that's very very important. Because now uh, doesn't matter if they take or king a three, it's the same thing. Uh, the point is that my pawn has no more moves, so it doesn't matter if it's not here or just uh, immobilized. King a three was played, and now my king is stalemated. So as long as I lose my rook, it's a stalemate. <laughs> yes, you can just give it for the queen or something. Yeah, um, so I have to force so, them to take it. Yes. That's the thing. After king b4. And now a4. rook a4. Yeah, exactly. And if they take it, stalemate. So they got to keep going. And uh, I can't take, take the away. queen because oh, promotion. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I would love to play for material. But again, you got to go get away from material. It's really difficult to switch to that mindset. Yeah. But... Rook c4. <laughs> King takes a stalemate. Queen is takes a stalemate. Is this an actual game? That's an actual game on chess.com. Was, was it, a, it. it was not over the board, no? No, no, it was uh, online, but okay. it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, king takes b3. Again, I lose if I take the queen. Rook b4. I'm just chasing <laughs> his king. Nothing he could do. <laughs> as long as I don't change anything here, it's stalemate. Oh, this and is amazing. And we just went on and on and on. And he was a good sport about it, actually. Uh, I'm going to show you how it ended. Very funny. So I'm going to chase him all over the board. He can never take. And he went king f8 last move. That, that's what I call being a good sport, because after rook e8, uh, he has to take now. And it's stalemate, but he also promoted a queen. <laughs> so this is the final <laughs> position. <laughs> oh, this is crazy. This Absolutely. is so funny. Yeah, this is that's so funny. That's why I call it my, my immortal stalemate. Oh, this is uh, this is so funny! It's beautiful. I love this. Um, yeah. It would be, uh, it's it's really beautiful. It would be so f fun to have a game like this over the board, so you could actually yeah. see your opponent's reactions. Um, oh, that would be awesome. But uh, but yeah, this was uh, really funny. I I really enjoyed yeah. this one. <laughs> <laughs> and just to go back and uh, say the same thing, like rookie eight, um, after f seven, it's a draw that we just saw. But of course, they don't have to play this. So we're sort of betting that our opponent isn't careful. If our opponent is careful, none of this works. But I'm, that's why I'm saying like every two or two out of ten games, you will save like this. So just because I, I show you like eight examples of a row when I did save it, you're not going to see the 95 that I didn't, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. Um, of so course. you shouldn't expect to save every game, but this is how you would do it. So if, of course, if they play rookie seven, I'm, to I'm just toast. Um, and then I have nothing. Next move is discover check and checkmate. <laughs> yeah, but but, uh, uh, cool. but it's like you you said in the introduction, like if you can save two of ten games. Yeah, in the long run, that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, did you so have more see. examples, or did we go through all of them already? Um, let's just see. We have a few more. Uh, we have two more examples, and then we can do the game. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Wonderful. Um. Let me just see. Let me just pull up the right one. Is it this one? Nope, it's the other one. So I played a game recently, um, two weeks ago, 
which uh, demonstrates how I fought on at my level, which is 2400 online, thereabout. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole game, of course, um, but just to skip to the end part, let's just see. Uh, to skip to the part where I lost the material. So here, it's an even game, very intense. Um, and then they took on E1, and instead of recapturing, I wanted to have fun, because chess is about having fun. <laughs> so I played Rook H7, just going for it. Objectively, this is a horrible move, and I wouldn't play this ever in a standard game. <laughs> um, but I wanted to have some fun, and, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, and they just played Rook E7, and I'm just down a Rook. Um, so king f2, and I'm going to respect all the guidelines. So um, already my first move is a mistake because I allow queen c5. I completely missed this move, yeah. and I allow trading. Yeah. So mentally, I should be like, oh man, how am I supposed to? But I'm like, okay, who cares? Worst case scenario, I lose the game. Big deal. I lost the game of chess. <laughs> yeah. So I just continue. Rook h6. Uh, they take, take. Um, okay. I have six. So I'm a uh, rook down, and this guy's 23. 37 and I'm just fighting on staying active minimizing trades if possible so here I traded knight in order to solidify my position take out an important pawn and so on I'm a full rook down but I'm just fighting on of course I don't want to trade so I just go back and I'm just being as annoying as possible making it as difficult as I can so defend this one attack this one I'm putting pressure here my knight is a monster in the center mm. so there's still chances Rook b4, hitting the weakness. Uh, king f3, getting the king up. Okay. Trading pawns when you're down. Creating some pass pawns here, more chances. So we fought on and on and on, but I want to show the main moment where I actually turned the game around. Uh, so of course they made progress. Uh, all that good stuff. And this was the trick. We're coming to it very soon. This one. There we go. Uh, so the last move was knight to d3 check. Uh, I have two options, king b1, king d1. Uh, what they are expecting is king b1, running away from their pieces, of course, and then they would play rook takes b2, I would have to play king a1, so that's the sort of expected sequence. So we said we want to play unexpected chess and sort of, sort of shock our opponent. So I went king d1 into a discovery, mm. which seems suicidal, <laughs> yeah. but uh, actually it makes a lot of sense, and there's some real calculation behind this that I had to do really quickly, because we were both in time trouble. Uh, so try to follow along, I'm going to do it with arrows. After king d1, I'm getting back into the game because knight b2, the most logical move, is Hangs a blunder. A Hangs a rook, but I also hang my rook. Oh, yeah. But the point at the end is knight f6. <laughs> oh, And I yeah. fork there, king and rook. So it looks like, oh, I'm just trading pieces. This rook for this rook, but at the end, I had planned this knight f6. Right. So right. I, I made their most logical move a blunder. So king d1 was actually a trap. And they fell yes. right into it head first. Yes, because so, that uh, double check uh, looks very juicy. Exactly. It's a double check. It trades like forks, rook. You just have to go for it, I mean. Um, and it ended up being a trap. Because now it's just a knight end game, which I was able to hold. You can see um, there was a draw at the end. I'm not going to play through. I'm just going to scroll through it quickly. Uh, but I was able to hold this end game and save myself a lot of rating by not losing and drawing instead. Mm -mm. Uh, so we had this, and yeah, draw. Uh, and I played this game about two weeks ago. So this is at the level of 23, 2400, chess.com. So pretty serious level. And I was able to apply exactly what I just taught you. Um, so I'm sure you'll be able to apply it um, at other levels too. Yeah. Which is going to be awesome. awesome. And our final example before that game. Uh, let's see uh, this one. Uh, let me see the other one, actually. This one. Okay. Um, so this was a game that was played, and then g5 was the move here for white, uh, for black, sorry. And um, in this position, white just gave up. Um, the reason why is because they're just down an exchange at the moment. So let's just highlight everything that's equal. This is equal, this is equal, this is equal. So the imbalance is the orange. Yeah. So we're down in exchange at the moment, and we're losing a piece. So it's like we're going to be down a rook. Uh, who cares? Let's just move on to the next game. Um, that's why white resigned. But in fact, there's a lot of fight left in this position. So if you had to fight on, how would you fight on? <clears throat> uh, a small test. Go for a king. Good. 
So what moves come to mind generally when you say go for the king? <laughs> like a few examples, candidate moves. Uh, well, I'm not very happy about that x-ray on my queen. Yeah, it's a bit annoying. Um, yeah, Jordi, actually I was thinking about this uh, myself. Uh, Jordi is saying this kind of reminds me about the Sulva game against Cameron. And uh, it, 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 I was uh, sitting thinking about it mean? actually because I played uh, Cameron and I blundered uh, a piece. No, I blundered an ex exchange in the opening. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just gave up. Uh, so it uh, oh, came gosh. to mind. But, uh, but back to this position. Like, uh, the first thing I was thinking was, uh, you know, just uh, Queen G3 ganging up on uh, the D6 pawn. But this seems a bit uh, slow and not very forceful. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just thinking, could I find something better? Uh, what we could do to open up uh, towards the king is maybe C takes B, but at the same mm -hmm. time you're opening black rook. So I don't know if uh, if this is uh, the best. Um, uh, but as at the same time, it. it opens our bishop, I guess. So it could get potentially go to d5 with a check. Uh, maybe this uh, opens some um, play for us if we open that um, mm -hmm. c file. Like it, his rook is in the c file, but uh, I don't think he can use the c file for so many things right now because our king is uh, pretty safe on h2 behind that uh, g2 pawn. Mm -hmm. Well done, yeah. Uh, also, we said we don't care too much about like positional things like, oh, he has an open file when we're like down a row. <laughs> it doesn't matter too much. All we care about is opening up the king and getting to the king. So great job. C takes b5 is also the first move I saw. And that's a real chance at his position. Um, and I think that's like the only chance. Everything else is um, a bit too passive. So um, I have prepared a variation of how this game could have gone. So let's just take a look. C takes b5. And they don't have to recapture. They could go rook takes f4 mm. instead of... Also yeah, the yeah I, just, I just want to say that the uh, queen g3 yep. thing that I talked about, I failed to see that the bishop was hanging. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so maybe yeah. if I failed to see the bishop was hanging, maybe I wouldn't suggest uh, c takes b, actually. Oh, but uh, okay, let's continue. Yeah, but we said generally you want to um, go for the king. Yeah. So uh, c takes b makes a lot of sense, opening up some of the diagonals towards the king. Like right now, we, we already have a check, for example, if mm. they recapture, which could be dangerous. And then if they go back, we have queen b6, checkmate. Let yeah. you see it quickly. Yeah, so he, yeah. Boom. Yeah. And take takes. Yeah, uh, so he will go... not uh, recapture. He will probably take the hanging bishop, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and now, of course, we're going to get his met, get his king as open as possible. So b takes c. Uh, now they have to react. And now and we have bishop example, d5. No. Uh, bishop d5 is good, but our queen is hanging. Oh, yeah, the queen is hanging. Yeah. So we just got to solve that problem. But then a bishop d5 will be a great uh, threat. So let's say queen d2 or something. Just get the queen to safety. And they got to get rid of this somehow. So, for example, a move they could easily play is queen c2. Trying to trade queens. It's a small inaccuracy, but a very logical human move. Uh, also leads to the attack. Um, and now, actually, queen d5 check. And after queen c6, queen e6 is very interesting. So this is a variation that could have happened in the game uh, if the game had played on. And white is the one trying to win now and black is the one trying to draw, surprisingly. Even though black is down, um, uh, black is up a rook, black has to find very precise moves to even have like a small advantage. Which might come as a bit of a, a surprise. Because we're threatening bishop d5, we're threatening queen e7, mm. we have rook lift ideas, our b pawn is free to run, mm. and our king is safe. So mm. the only thing they have going for them is the material. Uh, and let me just cheat with the engine quickly because I want to see an evaluation. Yeah, uh, if I turn on the engine, I, I'm seeing minus two if they play queen e8, which is, okay, a very passive move. Uh, everything else is zero, already within equality. And yeah. we're full rook down. Yeah. So these so, are crazy numbers. So if you're like, uh, if you're playing like stockfish, uh, you can survive this uh, assault. Yeah. But uh, when you're human... And uh, you will uh, at some point uh, maybe mm -hmm. react and do a mistake. Exactly. exactly. And, so this is a very complicated yeah. position. That's what we're doing. Uh, for example, to show you a variation, after rook takes e4, makes a lot of sense. Um, Counterattacking the queen, defending the bishop. We can already add more complexity with the move b5. 
So all we care about is that it's complicated so that our opponent makes a mistake. And already, for example, they can't hold on to their rook, really, because bishop d5 is coming with check. After like queen c2, mm. bishop d5, and we just win. Mm. Um, and if they try to trade queens, now we've regained our material. Yeah. Even position, anything can happen. So this is what I'm talking about. Like, stay active, keep it complicated, and your opponent has to make a mistake <laughs> sooner or later. If they but don't, the, they really deserve the victory. You know. Can, what can, I, can I ask a question? Of course. Uh, because there's, it's one thing that confuses me. Um, mm -hmm. And this might be an annoying question, by the way, and it might be difficult to no answer. But can you define making the position complicated because i hear this all the time and i feel i feel like okay so my understanding of this make a position complicated is give yourself tactical chances or create chances for yourself or create uh, possibilities for your opponent to go wrong yeah. Even though um, it's maybe not the objectively best move, but uh, it's giving chances or... Yeah, yeah I don't know. So how, how would you define it? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And uh, first of all, I just want to say that you can freely ask, freely ask any question. I'm here to help. Uh, so you shouldn't feel bad about asking a question at all. Um, and that's a very good question. So I'm going to answer it by saying that uh, complexity increases with the amount of tension in the position. When I say tension, do you know um, what that refers to? Uh, available Have you heard of captures. That, like? Basically, yeah. So like uh, tension when between uh, pieces. When there's standoffs, like in the opening, exactly. you could have uh, pawns uh, looking at each other. That would be tension. So uh, Because yes. then all the time you need to calculate, oh, suddenly this changes if the pawn takes now. Maybe mm -hmm. I, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm describing this uh, badly, but uh, I, no, no, I, I know understand. what you mean. Like two pawns def attacking each other in the opening, and then it's like, oh, he could take me or I could take them at different timings, so it changes the position. I know exactly what you mean. Um, so basically, you increase complexity by adding more and more tension. So here, uh, instead of just saying, oh, queen f7, we break the tension. Now there's no more tension. So we're adding more, b5. Now these two interact as well as these two, as well as these two, this is attacked, like there's many things being attacked simultaneously. Okay, question. You know? Yeah. So adding complexion should be good when you're down material. Correct. Because you're confusing your opponent. But what Correct. if you're confusing yourself? Yeah, that's the point. You're confusing okay. both of you. Okay, yeah. you're confusing everyone, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like you're going to confuse your opponent, but not yourself. That's okay. very rare. So you're going to confuse everybody. <laughs> but that's the point. In a very confused position, both sides can make a mistake. <laughs> but if it's a very simple position, then nobody's going to make a mistake and the expected result will play out. Okay. If that makes sense. Okay, because I'm sometimes afraid to add this... Uh, 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 <laughs> how do you say? This... Um, what's the word? I forgot it already. You complexity? add... Yeah. Add yeah. complexity. Yeah, I'm even confusing myself just talking about this. <laughs> because I'm confusing myself. And then... Yes, complications. Thank you, Marapant. Uh, yeah. I'm sometimes afraid to add complications because I'm confusing myself. But maybe mm -hmm. I think one one of the one one of the um, things I need to work on is not believing so much in my opponent because uh, mm -hmm. when I play against my opponent, it doesn't matter the rating they have if it's low or if it's higher. Yeah. Like uh, I always treat the position like I'm playing against uh, the engine or something. Uh, yeah. So so I think like I'm only confusing myself, but of course. The chances are high i'm also confusing the opponent uh, mm -hmm. but i never thought about that before because i thought i was only confusing myself so yeah it so confuses that's, uh, both of you but i'm telling you that that's a great thing because that's where to, mistakes are made yeah. yeah i have too much respect it's the same thing as uh, my mm -hmm. too much respect for my opponent i need to yeah. be more disrespectful um maybe yeah it's maybe. gonna be good for when you're losing basically yeah. uh, but i have a surprise for you are you ready Yes, I love this surprises. This was your game. Huh? <laughs> this was your game. Your chat correctly recognized it. I did take this from your account. It's my game? <laughs> yes. You played this. This was your game, and after G5, you resigned. I have the actual game if you want to see. But Is it against Cameron? Uh, let me see. I have it bookmarked. One sec. Uh, let me just open it up. Uh, Is small this my game? Goose. Yes, it's against Cameron. Jordi, your memory. Cameron? 
oh yeah so this was why <laughs> somebody I was in the chat had crazy memory oh yeah my God. and also me because i was thinking like oh yeah. this uh, reminds me of the game against cameron and and it actually <laughs> was the game against cameron so i didn't recognize it wow but, uh, oh wow I was very okay impressed. so i actually had uh, i actually had some chances here yeah what yeah, a plot yeah. twist and you know he's a two as, as you said earlier you're playing against the rating and instead of the player this is a 2000 player um yeah. so you know not invincible human yeah you could make chances against me in a, in, in a position like that as well like it's not about who plays it so try to focus on just the pieces my mentality when i'm playing chess personally is that i'm just playing against the pieces i don't care if uh magnus carlson moves the pieces or joe from downtown same thing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be playing the exact same moves. What's so your vendetta against Joe pieces. from downtown? It's nothing personal. It's just like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. But uh, yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was uh, this was very uh, eye opening because uh, yeah, it, uh, I talked about this because uh, when I blundered that exchange in the opening, um, mm -hmm. I just uh, fell apart like uh, yeah. a sack of potatoes in my chair. And I just thought, oh, everything is over. <laughs> uh, I blundered. I'm so stupid. She's 2000 rated. Uh, a lot of people are watching. Uh, how can I blunder an exchange like that? Uh, and it even took me five minutes to realize I had blundered the exchange. So I just felt like mm -hmm. a complete idiot. So... Um, yeah, I just yeah. Uh, never recovered mentally, and I just gave up then and there, and I didn't fight at all. Uh, yeah, and also, yeah. I thought it was a difficult position. Yeah, we can actually look at that blunder if you want. Just quickly, just quickly to make a point. Um, yeah. So what happened here, h3 takes, and now you took with the rook instead of the pawn, uh, losing an exchange effectively. And from yeah. here, it's very easy to say, oh, I'm, uh, I'm this way, I'm that way, how could I have missed that, I'm so bad, um, and all the things you named. Um, but what you should be saying is, okay, I made a mistake. That's it. Done story. <laughs> now it's time to play chess again, you know? So again, you should try to freeze for like a few seconds and just say, okay, it's, it's fine. Not the first time, not the last time. So that's what I, I say to myself. And then I just say, okay, I imagine I'm teleported into this position just magically. I, I don't know how I got here, but I'm just teleported. I have to make the best of it. Yeah. My coach gave me this as homework, so now I have to make the best of it. That's how I think about it. This is uh, this is a really good uh, way of thinking about it because you take the emotion out of it and you also yeah. prime you prime your brain for a challenge. Exactly, and it feels much much better when you come back from a losing game than if you just win because you just win. That's what I'm going to tell you, from my yeah. many years of saving games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it feels so so much better, especially over the board when you see the guy's face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. But, uh, um, yeah. Okay, so this was Amazing. a very, very pleasant uh, surprise. Um, so, so what I'm thinking, uh, are we ready to move on to part two of the stream? Yes. Hey, it's me again. Um, I just want to say thank you for making it through the entire stream. Hope you learned a lot and I'll talk to you very soon. Take it easy.